Hello and welcome to today's episode of Let's Talk Loyalty and Loyalty TV. Today's episode is with KFC in the USA, the iconic quick service restaurant brand with a proud heritage of over 60 years of success and innovation. KFC is now the world's most popular chicken restaurant chain. And given the competitive market they operate in, we were particularly excited to hear about the launch of a new digital loyalty program for US diners in partnership with our friends in Marigold. With a clear focus on digital transformation, their loyalty strategy leverages the power of gaming, fun and fandoms to drive the key commercial objectives that are brilliant both for diners and for the business. Joining me for this episode is Paul Toscano, Chief Digital Officer for KFC USA, and Roger Williams, Head of the Loyalty Center of Excellence for Marigold. Together, they share the program that has already resulted in over three and a half million members joining this new loyalty program in 2024 alone. I hope you enjoy our conversation with KFC USA in partnership with Marigold. So, Paul Toscano and Roger Williams, welcome to Let's Talk Loyalty and to Loyalty TV. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Amazing. It's always particularly exciting for us when an iconic brand like KFC is heavily investing in something so customer focused and so super fun. So I know we have an amazing story to share with our audience today. Before we get into talking about either of your careers or about the program, of course, uh, we do have a very important opening question, uh, which always gives our audience a sense of what you admire as loyalty marketing professionals. So, Paul, uh, coming from a KFC perspective, um, tell us over your career, uh, coming up to where you are now, what is currently your favorite loyalty program? Sure. And it really depends on what uh, what's relevant in my life today. And right now, I would have to say Southwest Rapid Rewards. Uh, their, their program is it's so sophisticated in terms of how you can redeem points. Uh, there's like like for like cash value, which makes it extremely valuable. So it doesn't limit you as far as what you can do with your points. Uh, and then also uh, their companion program. So I have companion status. So my family gets to fly for free with me uh, whenever you know they can tag along if it's not a business trip. So it's a it's a great value uh, to the overall program. Um, and they're you know such a such a great brand in itself. Like very friendly, very welcoming. I, I love flying with them. So. Um, yeah, they, they've really earned my business. Amazing. A great answer. And actually, we haven't had Southwest mentioned as yet, if I can, uh, if I can think back. So uh, shout out to Southwest, if anybody from there is listening. We'd love to have them on talking about the loyalty program. But beautifully articulated, Paul, because it is about that simplicity and making it relevant and valuable in your everyday life. That'd be great. So, yeah, absolutely cool. So, Roger, please tell us from your side, what is your current favorite loyalty program? I'm envious because that truly is a, is a great choice, Paul, um, uh, really from an emotional loyalty perspective. But Paul, uh, you, you really put me in a, in a tough situation because at Marigold, we do touch and power um, a lot of programs that people have heard of. So um, it's a little bit of a sticky wicket for me. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to give you the political answer and say that I have many favorites, uh, uh, certainly um, uh, programs that uh, are, are, are are really touching on that emotional uh, sense and, and, and allowing customers to really get what they want, like Paul says, I think are, are, are great. So if I really would have to pick a favorite, um, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to tell you I have many favorites. So we'll be oh. here all day. <laughs> okay, good political answer, nicely sidestepped and totally understand the position you're in. Nobody wants to choose between their favorite children. So no problem at all. So let's get into um, your individual backgrounds. Uh, Roger, given that we're, um, we're chatting right now, how did you get to this incredible role at Marigold? Wow, it's been a long road, really. I started my career in um, really the late 90s as a loyalty program manager for an airline, uh, actually for Air Jamaica, now uh, Caribbean Airlines, uh, running the loyalty program and alliances there. Um, and, and really, that, that has, has influenced my entire career, just in, in looking at 
loyalty programs. Um, I tend to have a slant towards ancillary revenue. So uh, certainly creating uh, an immense amount of value for customers and generating ancillary revenues and profits uh, for companies. And that uh, led me towards uh, consulting um, for, for many years and um, launching industry conferences and uh, helping loyalty managers and ancillary revenue managers to move forward in their careers at Airline Information. Uh, mm -hmm. We had several events, including the mega event, uh, and that was a lot of fun for many years, and we certainly moved things forward in the airline loyalty space. Uh, in 2021, um, uh, not long after COVID, um, after I, I left uh, uh, Sabre, <laughs> airline technology industry giant, there, um, and we did a lot of really cool loyalty things at Sabre, um, I joined uh, Marigold. And, um, and being at Marigold really has been interesting because here you have an old airline loyalty guy um, getting involved in retail and QSR loyalty programs. And it has been a lot of fun. Uh, really just bringing some of the lessons from that vertical and learning with colleagues like, like Paul and so many of our other customers in the QSR space um, is absolutely exciting. So um, I'm happy to be here. Incredible. Well, we're happy to have you. And absolutely, I know you guys do so much in the, the fun side of loyalty. Um, and coming from an airline background is obviously um, incredible uh, in terms of just that kind of industry training, because um, obviously the airlines were the original. Uh, but the gamification side is something that I find super exciting. So, Paul, tell us, you've had an incredible career as well with some phenomenal brands. Um, so do you want to talk to us about your loyalty career? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think the, the first time I actually touched onto loyalty uh, was while I was at Verizon Wireless. Um, when Verizon started their first uh, loyalty program, I believe it was called Verizon Plus or Veri Smart, uh, Verizon Smart. Um, it was so long ago, I'm trying to remember. But uh, I helped kind of stand that up. Um, with some of the activations with local marketing, so local promotions and rewards. Um, but then after that um, was mobile wallets. So we had an investment in a, comp uh, like a consortium investment with, uh, uh, with all, the, all the other carriers, and we created uh, a mobile wallet called SoftCard, uh, where you could load your loyalty cards into it. So when you, when you went to pay with NFC or tap to pay, you transferred your loyalty information at the same time as you paid. So, and we had the the full stack software. So, with the payment terminal providers and the POS, uh, you we were able to pull up your rewards information, and you can transact with your points if you had points. So, we did integrations with Toys R Us with their loyalty program. We did Coke Rewards, uh, where you could tap and pay at the vending machine and pay with your your rewards points. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was that was back in like twenty. 2010, I think it was. Um, wow. So there was a, there were several brands uh, that were a part of that loyalty uh, onboarding their loyalty programs into our into the the wallet, um, and then since then we've sold that uh, what we refer to as Smart Tap uh, to mm -hmm. Google. So now it's a part of the Google Wallet ecosystem. Um, now not too many players have participated in it, and I think Apple is still uh, looking looking at implementing, or they have implemented it, but not too many people have onboarded. Uh, but that's that's where I really got into technology uh, mm -hmm. for loyalty programs. Uh, and then obviously Marriott Bonvoy. So I was responsible for Marriott Rewards, uh, uh, the app, uh, as well as Ritz Carlton Rewards app. And then when we acquired SPG, so we had all three we had all three brands uh, and then ultimately merging that all together to, to become Marriott Bonvoy. Um, so I ran that program um, since the at least since the app inception for Marriott Bonvoy. And then prior to that, uh, what I would refer to as version 1.0, which was very, very basic. Uh, but yeah, ultimately ended up, uh, I would say it was one of my, my favorite projects and products that I got to work on. Uh, <laughs> being that I was a big Marriott fan before I joined Marriott itself. Um, okay. So yeah, that, so that, that was my history. And now, now I'm here at uh, KFC and we launched the KFC Rewards Program. You shared a wonderful anecdote as well, Paul, when you joined Marriott. Um, so I'd love if you'd share that with the audience, because I know um, to me it was just really interesting what your experience was from being a loyal member already to, to working on the inside then on the program itself. So will you share that one with us? 
Yeah, I mean, when I started with Marriott, first of all, Marriott is such a great brand. As a, as a consumer, it, people are so loyal to it, uh, as was I. Uh, I was a rewards member for 15 years prior to that. I was gold status and joined, uh, joined Marriott. And what was interesting at the time, and nobody told me this when I joined, but they froze my account. And I took, and when I found out, I, I like, I took it to heart. I was like, "Oh my god, like, you don't, you don't mess with somebody's program and points, uh, and status." So they froze my status, they froze my points, yeah. And um, I ended up writing Arnie Sorensen at the time, our CEO, right away. I was like, "Hey, you can't do this, right?" <laughs> Especially, and like I said, the the premise of being able to drink your own champagne, eat your dog, your own dog food, uh, yeah. you know, is the way you can deliver a better product for your consumers. Um, so he, he wrote back immediately and said, hey, don't worry, Paul, we're working on it. So sure enough, they they made the, the program available to to everybody thereafter. But uh, one of the things uh, when people ask me, like, wow, the, when they compliment the Marriott Bonvoy program yeah. or the app, uh, they say, how come it's like it's, it's such a great app? And I said, well, I built it for myself. As a rewards member, I built it the way I wanted it. So yeah. that was... Uh, that was that was a, a part of the whole whole process of joining Marriott and being on the inside making the sausage. Yeah. Well, kudos to you for emailing the CEO on day one, Paul. I think that's a lesson to all of us that when you believe in something so passionately, you should absolutely address it. And amazing that at the time they didn't believe in staff having access, especially such a valuable account as you'd already um, you know been a member of. So yeah. well, thank you for sharing that. It's a brilliant story. No problem. And I don't think it's that they didn't believe it. I think there was economic things that they had to get through. Uh, sure. But taxes and whatnot. But they figured it they out. They got it sorted. Brilliant. Brilliant. So KFC, very lucky to have you. I know you're, what, about a year in this role, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in, in this particular one? Ex exactly a year today. today okay. Or, yeah. Okay. Well, happy anniversary. And tell Thank us, you. I mean... When you decided to go for that role, what was it that appeals to you about about making the move? Uh, well, was definitely the brand, and obviously, you know, this is an opportunity to control the entire stack, right? So, uh, front end development, user experience, now the rewards program. Um, so, having that complete control and defining it for uh, an elite brand like KFC, that's you know globally recognized, uh, mm -hmm. was uh, was the main attraction. I can imagine. Absolutely. And what stage was it at? Obviously, Paul, you're going to tell us, um, you know, everything that's been going on. But when you came in a year ago today, what stage was KFC Rewards at that point? They had already started planning uh, KFC Rewards um, for almost two years prior to me joining. Uh, okay. So as far as like the framework of what the rewards program was going to be, what the economics were, uh, that mm -hmm. had already kind of been ironed out. Uh, and they were they were developing uh, a lot of the back end because it's all based on Marigold's technology plugging into our Yum uh, commerce ecosystem. So Yum is our parent company, uh, and we've got a major investment in our digital and technology, uh, restaurant technologies. Um, so that organization had built this whole ecosystem to be able to plug in multiple loyalty platforms. We were the first ones uh, to be on that platform uh, to launch it for for Yum. Um, wow. Yeah. So, so they had already done, they had done all that work prior to me getting there. Uh, okay. and then we were in the, we were in the uh, middle of the throes of development, uh, when I got there. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I started there in August. So we launched in January. So we had roughly about six months uh, of development to complete and launch. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, so that's, that's kind of, that was the extent of it. And then when we launched, it was, ja it was, uh, January 29th. Okay. Um, of this year. So we're Great. still very, very young. You're still very, very young. And uh, in a minute, I'll come back to you to see how it's going so far. But I wanted to ask Roger, from your perspective, were you involved from the inception of this opportunity with KFC back, uh, I suppose, three years ago? Um, I, I wasn't involved in the very beginning. I certainly became involved along with the strategy team uh, closer to launch. Uh, there was a lot of really, really hard work uh, that went in um, by our respective technical teams to really bring us to this point. And um, I, I think we'll be remiss uh, not to recognize a lot of those folks. Yeah. Um, and, and just the, um, I think Paul would agree that the cohesion of, of our teams, you know, I believe they even share Slack channels. 
um, and go back and forth. And um, it's, it's almost a real time interaction. So uh, yes, I'm, I'm coming up and leading towards the launch, which was uh, quite impressive. And I'm sure Paul's going to uh, have quite a bit to say about that. And I won't steal his thunder. Um, we started getting involved in really um, creating this cohesive combination of um, not just the technology, because now they've brought us to this mm-hmm. point of technology nirvana, but combining in, in what I like to see in, in our product is um, unifying that with strategy. Uh, yeah. So along with um, our, our very extensive strategy team, um, the COE got involved and, and we're, we're certainly looking at a number of opportunities that we can drive the program forward. Yeah. Absolutely. And I know when we talked offline, there was certainly a very clear intention um, around the program. Um, I guess it's obviously, first and foremost, a very competitive sector, um, clearly an iconic brand, and I think also very culturally significant as well. So I guess there's lots of different ways that you could have gone with the loyalty program. So uh, would you mind explaining the proposition, Paul, in terms of what was launched uh, just, I guess, eight months ago? ago, if you said it was January of this year. I know yep. there's been a huge amount of work going on, as Roger said. So tell us the, the customer proposition. Yeah, sure. Uh, so KFC Reward members, once they sign up, they can earn 10 points uh, for every dollar spent. Um, mm-hmm. And then after that, they can redeem it. Right now, they're currently being able to redeem it for food. Um, mm. But the, the way it's set up is that it's uh, certain different different items are presented in there, and especially our LTOs, things that we you know we want to encourage folks to sample and try. So there's a there's a a good selection of food available at different price point or tiers uh, point tiers, um, mm-hmm. and then we have uh, promotional uh, targeted offers for our, our members. So highly targeted. Uh, depending on what you enjoy uh, and how often you come in, there'll be promotions just for you, and those will end up in your in, in the app for you. Um, and then right now we're in the process of launching um, challenges and badges. So this okay. is the gamification element of uh, what we're doing. Um, so now we're going to be able to reward you with these badges, uh, which are going to be really fun to collect. Uh, they're going to be limited time availability as far as digital collection. And, even, and we're still working through kind of what can those badges unlock for you? Um, so whether it be at activations or in store, uh, there's a there's an opportunity to surprise and delight people who are dedicated in collecting these these badges. Uh, but to get these badges, you have to go through a series of challenges. Sometimes it might be a single action right, to earn the badge. Uh, In some cases, you know, you might have to try all our different sauces or different sandwiches um, to to be able to earn a badge. Uh, Or just share some information or uh, fill out a survey. Uh, We'll we'll unlock some of these badges for you. So that's uh, that's essentially the the intent um, of of the program is just to keep engaging in a very fun way. Um, So, and, and we have, I'm sure we're going to talk more about it, but Uh, There's definitely a lot more coming that we're very, very excited about. Oh, always. I can imagine. I know you're just getting started. Um, Give us a quick sense of what has been achieved just in terms of maybe key successes, Paul. Again, it's very young, um, eight months old at the time of recording. But I think you said to me last time we met, it felt like there was a big like pent up demand for KFC to do. Oh, yeah, there was a total demand. So it's it's amazing how, how many people love the KFC brand. Uh, and yeah. just the, they were just waiting because obviously they're, they're already very loyal. They, they love the, the chicken itself um, and they, they come back all the time. And this pent up demand, we, you know, we were setting our targets. We we're like, hey, how many how many should we think we should be able to do in the first year? Yeah. Uh, in the first month alone, we did a million customers. Wow, a million that's rewards unbelievable! Members, which is which yeah. was amazing. I was just like, wow. I was and being new to the new to the company, I didn't have a sense of uh, exactly what that demand was like and what that uh, brand love and fandom was like, uh, mm. and it's and it's huge. Um, so it was it was very exciting to see that. Incredible. And you mentioned the, the the personalization, so I thought I might ask Roger a little bit about that from your side. I think it's something that anytime we talk to people on the show, um, it's definitely a journey in terms of really delivering what customers expect in this day and age. So, what was the experience like uh, delivering personalization for such a such a, a fun program? 
Oh, it, it's it's really fun. Uh, uh, the the KFC team really gets it. Uh, just in, in the way the app is laid out, um, I'm a user of the app. I actually, I always insist that, that we use our, our clients' products. Um, yeah. and, and, and we, we all love KFC. And, and really, just, just the, the, the simple part of seeing what, what's next in the app, that experience is extremely simple, but very effective. Uh, so from a personalization perspective, <clears throat> there's a lot of things that are coming together to kind of coalesce that. It starts really with your loyalty journey um, in an example I just gave you there where it's, it's very clear where you're going in that journey. Um, mm. And certainly um, the other part of it is a collection of moments. Um, so uh, the, the strategy team at KFC came to us uh, <clears throat> with, with a cu- couple of challenges. And um, we, we have a <clears throat> methodology called a golden moments um, that really syncs well with a series of um, uh, moments and momentary marketing and life cycle marketing that the KFC team has already been prosecuting. Um, our golden moments really are, are, are built around um, that nirvana, that magical time after redemption, uh, where a lot of things happen. So the, the main objective really is to drive customers towards redemption. The more mm. they spend, is, is the more they're going to earn. And of course, mm. that earns going to represent additional revenue. Uh, mm. So we, we, we're working really hard, both teams, to kind of refine when those moments start um, after that redemption within the overall golden moment. Uh, so <clears throat> there, there, there's a lot of thinking and methodology that, that we've put into this to really yeah. you know, have that scientific evidence behind personalization. Um, mm. the, the other thing as well is, <clears throat> is that lo- loyalty is inherently backwards, right? So when Paul was explaining things such as the challenges, we may ask you a question, a little bit of prog- progressive profiling, um, we don't always just want to reward um, after a transaction without having some type of lead-in journey or some type of lead-in accrual. <clears throat> so, for, in- for example, um, giving points just for answering some questions, progressive profiling, having that lead-in, um, and then now we have, we have some more information about you that's relevant. Not too much information, but just enough inf- information to make that a personalized experience. Right. Mm-hmm. So whether it's like you, you like bone in options or boneless options um, and all those things, we're also building habitual patterns, because when you're answering those questions, we're going to give you some points. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's going to lead up to like, wow, points are actually worth something. And when I redeem mm-hmm. my points, they're worth something. And guess what, Paula? I want more of those points. So it's yeah. this wonderful kind of golden moment cycle that that we're um, uh, moving forward along with the team at KFC. Beautiful. Yeah. Very well said, Roger. Um, I was I was literally thinking about uh, about it as a virtuous circle um, and the terminology of golden moment is is really crystallizing it as well. I think it's absolutely fabulous. The thinking that's gone in and what I'm hearing um, and Paul, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm hearing is, first of all, um, a very clear understanding of the power of redemption. So burn drives earn, I guess, is, is something that we would often talk about. And that's very up to date thinking. So it's wonderful to hear that you guys are really happy for people to make sure that they get that redemption to drive their, their, I suppose, return visit to the restaurants. Yeah. And usually those redemptions are paired with additional purchases, right? So it's never just the the redemption itself. Uh, So again, as as you pointed out, there's there's an earning element as soon as they burn. Um, Yeah. So it just it just keeps compounding, essentially. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, and it always does. I think that compound effect is something that uh, certainly when I started in loyalty, I hadn't re- realized how powerful it was. Um, but I think when you combine that, then, as you said, along with the gamification, and I wanted to get a bit more understanding actually as well, Paul, because I know uh, you described yourself last time we met as, I think, a co- collectible nerd. And I know that's a core part now as well in terms of digital collectibles within KFC Rewards. So will you just talk about about the fandom piece. And for me, it's this idea of tapping into those kind of passion points uh, that you clearly understand that your customers love. Yeah, so I think I think I was very lucky, uh, you know, joining this brand because this is a pop culture brand. Uh, You know, the the Colonel has been featured in Funko products in DC Comics and Pokemon. So if you're if you're a collector of those, and, and for the most part, that's 
anyone under, I'd say under 45 uh, has collected these things as a child or, st or still collects. So uh, as far as like being able to resonate and connect with those fandoms, um, it, this is this is very natural, uh, at least for KFC. Uh, so I was very, very, very fortunate to, to join. Uh, and, and those folks are so loyal um, into, I mean, they love, they're so passionate about those, those products and those collectibles. Uh, yeah. And being able to unlock that for them through our mm. brand, like, you know, my, my whole philosophy is if you love what they love, they'll love you back, right? Or they'll love you more. And um, and this is natural for us, right? Like, uh, I, I'm a fan. Our, our CMO who started this came from Nintendo, so he's into the gaming, um, in the gaming space. I'm a comic book collector, sports memorabilia collector. Um, so you'll see you'll see some of that playing out. Uh, and when you think about all the partnerships that we've had over the, you know, the lifetime of the brand, right? We, we we're in we're in baseball. Oh, sorry, we're in basketball. We're in football. Um, yeah. Both college and professional. Uh, currently, we're doing something with Deion Sanders, uh, Zach Eady from uh, who just recently got drafted. Uh, so, so there's uh, definitely huge opportunities uh, that we're that we're looking at. Um, and one, one that we've, everybody's already seen is the, the Funko, uh, collectibles and Funko has just launched their, uh, Funko fusion campaign. So there's a new video game, uh, that's coming out, uh, mm -hmm. on September 13th, I believe it is. Um, mm -hmm. and I think this is going to air after that. So we're actually, uh, going to be a part of the game. So as far as like gamification is concerned, we're taking it to, uh, the next level, uh, for video gamers. Um, yeah. So the kernel will be available in the game, uh, and then you are actually going to be able to, or you are you you are going to be able to redeem your points uh, for in-game uh, experiences. Uh, in this case, we're going to have uh, souped-up uh, Colonel Sanders uh, in two different variations. So, uh, if you're a KFC Rewards member for free, you get the the chef version of uh, Colonel Sanders, and then for 250 points, you'll get the the mech armor. Uh, Colonel Sanders, which comes with uh, its own array of special uh, weaponry. So it gives you some OP power, you know, overpowers you in, in the game. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I could see Roger even smiling away there. Like, there's just so much joyful energy around all of these different propositions that you guys are building. And actually, uh, Roger, I do, I'd love to just get a sense from you. Again, you're working in a, a loyalty center of excellence. And it's not always that brands have that level of clarity that obviously that the KFC team have in terms of how the brand or the loyalty program can really kind of complement each other. So would you kind of see a lot of that or do you still think a lot of brands are on that journey? Like when you're talking with them at the early stages of their, of their thinking. This is pretty rare, Paula. Uh, uh, Paul and the entire team at KFC um, are, are, are truly special. And I'm not just saying that to butter you up, Paul, but really it's, um, it, it's, it's so refreshing to see that level of excitement and passion and a brand that is authentic. Um, uh, Paul mentioned you know, an airline brand earlier that has that level of authenticity. And yeah. really, that's where you want to be as an organization where the brand has that level of emotional loyalty just on its own. And then yeah. a programmatic loyalty program on top of that with all the constructs that we would power is simply mm -hmm. icing on the cake. And that's going to move that 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 revenue generation machine forward and then tr create that true incrementality. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we, we, we see a lot of, um, obviously, a, a lot of new programs and, um, you know, they, they come in every day. And one of the things that we try to advise on uh, when we're sitting there and someone's saying, hey, I, I need to start a loyalty program or I, I'm looking for loyalty technology um, is what are you solving for? Um, we, we really come in and um, we, we actually don't allow our salespeople to, um, to speak to prospects in the beginning. Um, it's us and our strategy team. Okay. And, and we're, we're there for free and we just want to nerd out on loyalty. Yeah. And in some cases, um, it may not be a good fit. In some cases, and don't tell sales this, we're just like, you're, you're not ready for a loyalty program. Um, yeah. it, right. Paul and the team were at that time where they, they were more than ready for a loyalty program. They, they were really chomping at the bit. And as you saw, there was a lot of pent up demand with a million yeah. members in the first month. So yeah. that's that's pretty rare, um, but we, we certainly want to make sure those things are aligned um, yeah. when you're when you're looking to start loyalty. Totally. Yeah, I, sorry, I, for, I forgot to mention uh, our partnership with Box Lunch. So we do we do all kinds of licensing deals, and 
uh, Box Lunch, uh, which is a child brand of uh, Hot Topics, I believe. Um, they did. We did a partnership with them, and they did a whole line of accessories and clothing uh, for KFC. And KFC reward members get twenty five percent off that line. So all you got to do is show up in the store, show them your rewards membership, or get the discount code. Um, and so Box Lunch is also a very big pop culture brand. So we've part mm. we had partnered with them uh, over the summer uh, on mm. Netflix. We launched National Fried National was it National Fried Chicken Day, which is on oh. July sixth, I believe. So. <laughs> if in doubt, lo- launch a day with your favorite food. I love it. That's amazing. Yep. Brilliant, brilliant. The other piece I always think about brands like yours, Paul, is. Um, the, the, I suppose the operational and ownership structure um, brings, I think, massive discipline is probably the word I'm going to I'm going to use because it's a franchisee led business. And um, you really have to, I sub- suppose, bring the whole organization, every single franchise owner along the journey of what you're building and, um, you know, what the, I suppose the funding model is and the returns that they can expect coming out the other side. So I'd love if you would just kind of comment on how you find it now, I guess it's quite a different uh, business structure again to what you've worked with in the past. But uh, working with franchisees, I think, is incredibly exciting for a brand like yours. Oh, yeah. So so we have a great set of franchisees. Uh, they're very invested in digital and technology. Uh, you know, they recognize that we're we're behind. Uh, you know, the the digital experience only started uh, during the pandemic, really. Um, so, so we're definitely behind. But they recognize how important it is, uh, and they they pushed uh, the brand to come up with this program. Um, and they're very invested. So, uh, you know, the the idea that you can redeem points and uh, for food in their stores. Uh, which yeah. is at their cost uh, yeah. to, to be able to participate in that and get uh, get their buy-in. Um, so very active. Uh, we, we meet with them quarterly. Actually, we just had our meetings yesterday. So we go over product roadmap. Uh, we discuss kind of issues uh, and see how we're going to try to solve it together as a, as a company. Um, yeah. So they're very, very active. Um, yeah, great, great set of people to work with. Amazing. Amazing. And I guess the other piece as well, which again is super exciting, and I think part of what you said at the very beginning appealed to you, Paul, the whole, I suppose, opportunity of a market the size of the US, which is obviously what we're talking about today, but then there's a whole global business out there. So I guess you can tap into not just the Marigold expertise, but also KFC colleagues all over the world uh, in terms of what they've done to drive loyalty and I guess frequency into the restaurants. Uh, that's that's right. So we do have so KFC Global runs the brand around uh, around the world. Uh, we're responsible for KFC US, and we're we're responsible towards our franchisees who pay into the program. So um, every every country or subset of countries has their own um, franchisee model and how they fund the program. So in our case, France already had a program. Uh, UK has a program. Uh, other brand other. KFC brands are looking at getting on board uh, and they're looking at us as the uh, poster child of how, what a program should look like uh, and looking at the, the technology stack that Marigold brings. Um, so there's definitely, uh, there's, you're going to see growth of uh, KFC rewards programs uh, around the country, or sorry, around the world, I should say, but definitely in yeah. the country as well. Um, but um, as far as like unifying the program, that's probably not going to be possible because of the franchisee structures that are there. So of we're course. very beholden to those franchisees that are there and each have their own yeah. economic models, uh, yeah. which kind of dictates what, what, what the programs look like. Yeah. And I do think it needs um, plenty of flexibility as well, just from us talking with other brands on the show. Obviously, there's different market conditions that that each of your operating countries need to reflect, I guess, different sets of competitors and um, mm-hmm. maybe different appetite for things like gamification, as you said. And that whole pop culture piece um, looks very different, of course, in different markets around the world. So so the job will never be done. And I guess that's half the fun of, uh, of marketing is that we get to customize things locally and at the same time have something extraordinary uh, for a market like the U.S. I mean, it's an incredible opportunity that, you, that you're working on at the moment. Yeah, it is. And uh, we're, we're starting to collaborate more globally as well. So we just came off of meetings with uh, my peer CD, CDTO group uh, just to talk about uh, market conditions, opportunities, where we can collaborate more. 
uh, and mm. looking at you know different technologies that we can we can leverage. Amazing. And Roger, again, I suppose coming back to you with the, I think the, even the most fun job because you're involved at the very beginning and a huge amount has been achieved, of course, already. Um, I know there's a lot more to come. What are you thinking about now as you're, I suppose, advising the KFC team um, in terms of what's next? Because there is always the next step, the next phase. Uh, so what are you thinking about? Yeah, we, we have a lot of things in mind as we've been getting some of these really interesting insights. Um, one of the, the things that I found really interesting that Paul shared with me early on was, was just really the trajectory for how people consume KFC, right? There, there, there's a clear delineation um, and perspective in terms of just their core product, right? So um, chicken on the bone versus kind of boneless options. And um, it, it's really interesting to see how um, the, those boneless options have aligned with frequency and repeat business. Um, and it's become really core to the program, right? Paul, I, Paul, I believe like nuggets are one of the, the favorite redemption items uh, for, for oh, your yeah. members. Yeah. Yeah. It is, and, and we intentionally structured it to make, so, make it so that nuggets were extremely accessible. Uh, it's, a, it's a new product that launched uh, last year. Um, and you know, I think it's actually one of the, definitely one of the best nuggets that are out there. Um, and now our saucy variants are amazing. They have taken off, um, with, uh, you know, broad variety of, uh, uh, segments. Uh, you know, the youth really love it. And when I say the youth, I'm talking about my kid, uh, who's 16 and his friends who, who, uh, have expressions that I don't understand, like saying it slaps. I have no clue what that means. <laughs> I've never even heard that, Paul. Do we know what it means yet? Or are we still hoping to figure that out? Apparently it means it's amazing. <laughs> you can infer well, that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Major, maybe Roger's cooler than, than I am. Roger, did you know that term already? First time, but I inferred it, it is amazing. And really, the, it's amazing for the business because we're seeing this this trajectory of um, the, the frequency aligned with those boneless options. And, um, you know, Paul, when you first shared that with me, I thought it was interesting. And we've been looking at that data and, and, and it definitely shows. So there's, there, there's so many things now that, um, you know, that, that we're, we're thinking about, uh, we're trying to support our colleagues at KFC um, and, and certainly looking at that proper life cycle marketing and, and, bringing that, bringing the loyalty elements into that, those habitual patterns, right? Yeah. So whether it's driving more frequency uh, into locations and for franchisees, um, yeah. and, and also just aligning with the, the product evolution, if it's going to be boneless, but also to still bone in, because um, that's, that's, a, that's a favorite. But then, you know, your behavior might be different around, say, a bucket of chicken and bone and chicken. Maybe that's more of a special occasion type of thing. So um, we, we want to be able to kind of examine all of this from a loyalty perspective, because as you know, it's it's just a plethora of zero party data and also yeah. kind of directional data and insights. Um, mm -hmm. So we're, we're really excited. There's actually a lot more insight than we can manage at, at the moment, but that, that's a good problem to have, right? No, we're, um, we're really excited about the data that we're, gonna, we're in the process of collecting, right? So getting to know our customers uh, and especially what really resonates with customers in terms of the different products. Right now we know what people are buying, right? But mm -hmm. to really say like, hey, you know, you know, the, these 25 year olds are, are, you know, honing in on the, the boneless products. Uh, and then which sauces are they really leaning towards? Are they the, the savory kind or the sweet kind, the, the, the hot spicy kind, right? So that really helps dictate kind of the product mix that we're going to be pursuing. Uh, mm. And then also even, even providing like exclusive sauce access to members and that kind of stuff to see really hit what hits ahead of, ahead of time uh, before we make it like mass uh, availability. So, um, yeah, just the data insight that's possible with this is, is amazing. Yeah. You know, I never knew there was such a thing as exclusive source access. That's super cool. I love it. <laughs> well, Honestly. so when we, launched, you heard it here first. when we launched our saucy sandwiches, it was available digitally only first for, for like a, a couple of weeks or maybe a week ahead. Um, so and those, those have been going pretty well as well. But but what I'm definitely hearing, Paul, is is not just the fun factor and genuinely it's amusing, um, but it's it's a very clear alignment in terms of obviously what the business needs, because you already told us earlier, for example, about the, the sampling that you're doing and using the loyalty program to get people to sample a different product, because 
I'm terrible, for example, that I tend to have the same thing anytime I go to a restaurant and my husband goes crazy. He's like, let's go to a new restaurant. Let's try something new. So I love when a loyalty program is actually use it, used as a lever to drive something that the business actually needs, because obviously nobody's going to buy the sauce or the the beautiful new chicken nuggets unless they've had an opportunity to sample them. So, so to use it so strategically, I also think is quite rare. No, it, it just, it just made sense. Uh, I mean, you lower the bar- barrier to try, right. If yeah. they're there, cause it, just like you, there's people who like, they know they want their two piece chicken with mashed potatoes and gravy. Uh, and, and they're reluctant to try anything else. So if you make it very easy, uh, to, to access the, the nuggets or, or new OR strips that are coming out, like, uh, that's, you know, that we've been testing in other markets. This is the way to do it, especially Amazing. amongst your loyal base, right? Because we, the, our loyal customers come in like every month, right? And the, and specifically the reward members are, are 20% more active. Um, mm. So getting them to try new things and having a pulse on like what really hits for them is mm. more than likely going to hit for the rest of the population. But like they're, they're a great uh, leading indicator. Amazing. Yeah. So sounds like from both sides, I guess, Paul, you first in terms of what's uh, what's coming for the future. You've talked about fun. You've talked about fandom. You've talked about that, I suppose, strategic alignment in terms of, you know, trying new products and all of that kind of stuff. Anything else you can kind of tease our audience with that you're, you're thinking about as we come, I guess, to the end of maybe 2024 and, you know, lots of uh, opportunities still ahead? Uh, I would say stay close to the program, collect those badges, uh, and we'll see what they unlock in the future. But it's definitely going to be a fun program. Okay. You did tell me before that you're literally releasing new updates every month, actually. So it's it's very active, I guess. Yeah? Lots of stuff. We we have, uh, I mean, like I said, we're pretty nascent in our digital experience. So there's a a lot to do in order to really serve our, our customers and our loyal members. Um, yeah. and we have, we have huge aspirations. Uh, I, I think this will, this will hands down be one of the best programs. Incredible. Well, no shortage of ambition there. Roger, from your side, what are you most excited about as we come towards the end of this year and into next year? Yeah, I really just think that, that what the team has been doing is a masterclass in digital merchandising for the QSR space. Uh, and I know we've been seeing digital uh, for this entire uh, session and, and Paul has digital in his title, but yeah. it really shouldn't be underestimated um, where KFC has brick and mortar stores, right? Where people go in there. But this program really has been successful around digital being the main interface for customers to experience the brand um, mm. and get a number of benefits, convenience. Um, so, so they're ordering through the app, they're, they're getting their rewards, they're coming in and picking up. Uh, it's, it's, it's super convenient. And that's going to drive really important KPIs like frequency and repeat business when people can get good quality food in, in a very convenient and accessible way. And digital is the, the panacea for that. So we're really excited in continuing that digital journey with, with Paul and team. Uh, mm-hmm. whether it's through the amplified gamification and the kernel going absolutely ballistic uh, in his full armor, um, or just having people try new things like, you know, slap in sauces. Um, and um, it, we, we do have a few, a few mechanics up our sleeve that um, we have prepared for some of, I know, Paul's really great ideas. Because when Paul comes with these ideas, um, <laughs> we run with it <laughs> because it's going to be magic, right? Uh, so we, I, I don't want to give it away too much, but, you know, in, in some of that, the same kind of mechanics in terms of um, if you think about, well, well, what will some people try, right? You know, how can we get more incrementality from just your high value uh, members and and we we have a couple things there where people will kind of wear be in different modes or temporal modes whether it's on a weekend persona yeah. or midweek mm-hmm. persona or if you're in your local area or you're on a road trip right mm-hmm. so there there's there's certainly some some ideas that I know we're we're working on there and we we have the mechanics to be able to make that fun and um, and profitable for um, the KFC brand. 
Yeah. And, and there's a couple of things you've said, Roger, from your side that I'm, I'm, I'm reflecting on. Uh, one is the fact that you've got all this kind of wonderful amount of data, um, which again, early days in terms of like extracting all of those insights. But the fact that you're capturing those, um, I guess it sounds like for the first time, means you're going to be super well informed, of course, in terms of all of those fun mechanics. So you can do the fun brainstorming and be sure that they're actually going to work. So so I think that that's really clear. And and again, I know we've talked with you guys before about that. Most brands are just still like desperate for insights um, uh, in order to deliver the personalization that I know you guys are working so hard on. So amazing to hear that that's such a strong work in progress. And the other term that I really liked you used, Roger, from your side was what are you solving for? Because I think that's something as loyalty programs, you know, it's important to keep that kind of vision. And, um, you know, no matter what stage the program's at, sometimes at launch, it's super exciting. But maybe a few years in, people sometimes lose sight of that. So that sounds like something that you and your team keep uh, front and center all of the time. Absolutely. Amazing. So, Paul, I'll come to you for any final thoughts, closing words of wisdom. Is there anything else about KSC Rewards that I haven't asked you about that you think our audience should uh, should know? Um, I, I think, you know, they should download the app, try it out, become a member um, and, uh, and see how it goes. But uh, yeah, I mean, again, stay close. Amazing. Wonderful. Well, listen, with that said, Paul Toscano, Chief Digital Officer from KFC US and Roger Williams from Marigold. Thank you so much from Let's Talk Loyalty and Loyalty TV. Thank you.